Okay, in this video, we'll try to get some theoretical understanding on what is session and session factory. Basically, for any typical web application, you'd have requests from the client technologies. Maybe that the user has submitted a form, or maybe he is trying to log in. He entered his credentials and clicked on the login button. Whatever it is, the web server would actually forward that request to some kind of a controller logic. Now, depending on the design pattern, and the mix of technologies that you're using. This could be a servlet or something else, but ultimately the request data would get sent to some kind of a business logic where we'll use that data to do something with it by interacting with the database. In case of Hibernate, we need to use so-called a session. We're supposed to create a session for each and every transaction that we are performing with the database. So let's say that we wanted to store that data. So for that, we have to actually create a session, which is a session object, and then using that session object, we'll interact with the database, do something with that data. It could be any of the CRUD operations. And then once you're done, we'll take care of destroying that object as well. So for each and every request that has something to do with the database, we'd create a session object, interact with the database, and then close on that session. But we're not actually going to create these sessions but rather, we're actually going to ask the session factory to create a session for us. So session factory is another object that we're going to create. And we're going to create this by feeding the configuration file that we had configured for the database. I mean the Hibernate XML file. We're going to sort of get all the details from that configuration file. And using those details, we'll create a session factory for each and every single database that we have. So for each and every database, we're going to have one session factory created. And that's what this diagram talks about. We have a couple of databases here. And for each database, we have one session factory associated with them to help transact with that particular database. Now do take a note that these databases may not belong to two different database management system softwares. This could be two logical databases belonging to the same DBMS software. So if I create a couple of databases in PostgreSQL, then I have to take care of creating a session factory for each and every individual database. But we're not really going to create a session factory every once in a while, because creation of session factory is a very expensive process. It's going to demand a certain bit of processing power. And if you keep creating for each and every request that comes in, then it's going to degrade the performance of the application. So the session factory object would be created only once when we start the application or during the first request that comes into the application when it starts. And from that point, it would stay alive until we terminate the application. But we can't keep the session for long because session is not thread safe and it's pretty lightweight as well. So it's okay to create a session object or rather ask the session factory to create a session for us for each and every request that comes in. On the other hand though, session factory is thread safe and it can stay alive for a long time. So in our next video, we're going to explore the code inside the test.java where we've actually created the session factory object using the configuration file. And then we're going to ask the session factory to create a session to do some kind of a transaction. And that's why this is called a session factory. It acts like a factory to manufacture sessions. Well, we'll see in our example. So stay tuned. All right, let's try to understand what's going on here in this code. Now we need to assume that this is the business logic of your application and you want it to perform some kind of a transaction with the database using Hibernate. So the first step is quite obvious. You need to create the session factory and this is how you would do so. You're going to create an instance of the configuration class, which is provided by the Hibernate itself. This configuration class will help you create the session factory using the configuration details that you set in this Hibernate XML file. So whatever you provide within this session factory tag will be fed into the session factory to create the same. So you would make a call to this method, build session factory, and by default it's going to assume that the configuration file is with the name hibernate.cfg.xml. And that's the reason why I had mentioned that you need to make sure that the name is same. And moreover, 
this is this method is actually deprecated I'm going to talk about it in the end of this video but this will essentially create the session factory the next step is to create the session using the session factory object and the way you do it is by calling this method open session and from that point you can use this session object to perform your transaction and here's how you do it pretty straightforward you would say session dot begin transaction and in here you would perform all the transaction steps that you wish to perform this could be a banking transaction like transferring funds or letting the user log in to his account etc it could be anything but a single transaction in here I'm trying to keep things simple by just instantiating our persistent class which is employee and then I'm sending some parameters to the parameterized constructor residing in that persistent class and I'm trying to save that object in this session and this is equivalent to inserting these two entries into the table employee we're going to see the end result and you'll understand what it means and once you're done with whatever you have to do you're going to say get transaction and commit this is what will make the transaction complete for example if there is some kind of an exception that occurs within the transactional instructions then none of the operations will get saved Hibernate will just simply roll back the database to its original state before the transaction well this is similar to some of the transactional concepts we had covered in our database course but here's how you do it like you begin the transaction perform whatever you want and then you commit the transaction if there is some exception then no changes would take effect in the database and once everything goes well you need to take care of closing the session as I've already mentioned session is not a thread safe object so you want to keep it as short as possible and here's how you do it now it's time to launch our application but before that let me show you the database and I wanted to show you that the employee table is not already present so it's not there now if I run this program I'm expecting Hibernate will create that table and also add this entry into that table so let's run the program and see how it goes let's expand this console and we're done let's go to database and see if things are in good shape and sure enough Hibernate did create the table and also inserted the entry in fact you can see the instructions that Hibernate has executed now these instructions are specific to your database so this may differ depending on the database and the dialect that you had used so it has created the database using the following DDL and it has inserted an entry using the insert query as well we're able to see all these messages because we had set these two properties now if you're running this application for the first time you may not be confident that it would work and in fact it's hard to say that it will work in the very first go I don't mean to say that I have flaws in my code but I mean there are certain things which are not in my control for example if you're using a different database then you have to carefully provide all the required configuration details if you mess up with it then things may not work just in case if things don't work then then you would get some errors on the screen on the console try to understand what it is try to fix the problem on your own if you're still not successful then there are a lot of online resources one is a stack overflow and the other is of course Google if you do a quick Google search you would most likely come across with uh, somebody who might have faced the same issue that you are facing if you're still not successful I'm the last option now let me tell you something I can solve your problem but it may not be a good idea if you want to learn because the best form of learning happens when you do mistakes and then you try to fix those errors on your own so do keep that in mind and I guess I also need to mention that we may not be following the best practices to write this code for example this method in here 
build session factory is actually deprecated. I mean, if you go to the documentation of this configuration class, you would notice that this method is actually marked as deprecated and is no longer recommended to use. Instead, we should use the same method with this parameter, service registry. Also, we're not really wrapping this code around the try-catch block. Well, I did mention that Hibernate is actually going to take care of handling the exceptions. In fact, it is going to take care of handling the exceptions that are related to SQL and other database related issues, but it won't handle the exceptions that occur in our code. So we need to take care of wrapping this code around the try-catch block and follow good practices. The reason why I didn't follow those good practices right now is to keep things simple because if I have to follow those good practices, the number of lines of code would increase exponentially and our code may look little complex although in reality it isn't. So just to keep things simple, I've written the following code just for the sake of explanation but I'm going to make those necessary changes in this code and I'll walk you through the code in next video. See you soon. Alright, here is the improved version of our code, also the recommended way to write our code. So although there is significant increase in the number of lines of code, we're trying to follow some good practices here. So first off, we have the static block within which we're trying to call this method load session factory. So in here we have the logic that does exactly the same to load the session factory so that we can use it at later point of time. And the significance of static block is something that I assume that you already know. This will get executed during the class loading time. But the key thing to note here is the way I'm creating this session factory. This time I didn't use that deprecated method, but I've done it in a different way. So I created the instance of configuration and then I'm trying to feed the configuration XML file. Do take a note that I have now changed the name from Hibernate to PostgreSQL. When you're trying to explicitly provide the name of the file, like I did here, then you can give whatever the name of your choice. But if you don't want to specify the same, then you have to leave it to hibernate.cfg.xml. And what comes next is I'm trying to add a resource, the employee hpm.xml, and this is basically whatever we give in here. Same thing should go there as well. And since these two files are residing in the resources folder and not in the subfolder, I don't have to provide the complete path. I can just specify directly the name of the file. Now here is the line that deserves some attention. Hibernate internally uses so-called services, which are basically classes that implement certain standard interfaces. For example, we have connection provider, which is an interface that specifies a set of standard methods to maintain the JWC connections so that the Hibernate can actually acquire the connections and perform DB operations. And we have multiple implementations for that interface and each implementation differ in terms of how they manage the connections, etc. But all this implementation would ultimately serve the purpose of managing the ADBC connections because they all implement the same interface. So now then, what is this service registry in here? Well, service registry will actually manage those services that are used by the Hibernate. And using this instruction, we are sort of building that service registry object and then fitting this object to the build session factory method to create our session factory. If this all sounds confusing, that's fine. These are all internal aspects of Hibernate and we developers don't have to bother too much about it. But uh, you need to understand that you need to stop using the deprecated method, which is build session factory without any arguments. But you should start using uh, this approach, which is with the service registry. And the rest of the changes are pretty much core Java concepts, you know, what is static method, etc. And here's the same logic what we had seen in our earlier example. So I'm trying to get the session by calling this method get session and is essentially returning a session object. And rest of the code is pretty straightforward. And also, of course, I've 
put in a lot of try catch blocks in here to handle possible exceptions and that's pretty much it so for your convenience I'm actually going to export this project and save it as part of the project files so you should be able to download this and even import in Eclipse and ROM and to take a look at what's happening in here so let me run this program and make sure it is working but before that I have actually deleted that table so we get this error now let's run our program and see if table gets created and sure enough it worked alright see you in my next video